Hello, so this is a dry run of the Pitapalooza 2021 session with the data of persistent identifiers as the basis for multilingual and human machine collaboration. Um, and the etherpad that you see here is linked from the session description, as is the Zenodo repository that uh, will then contain a copy of this video. Um, the dry run serves three main purposes. One is to test the technical aspects of the workflow for the for the session. Second, to have a backup in case anything goes wrong during the live session. And third, to have some documentation uh, of the live session for those who cannot attend it and in case the official recording fails. I actually have had trouble with previous attempts to record this. Um, so we'll see how things go. Anyway, for the, uh, the goal for the session is to uh, give you an overview uh, of how Wikidata works and uh, what the role of identifiers is in enabling a collaboration between humans and machines um, in multiple ways. It is uh, humans entering data, machines entering data, humans using data, machines using data, machines combining data with other data, and also humans who do not share a common language collaborating on the same data set. All of this is enabled by a uh, wiki infrastructure that is very similar to Wikipedia. So let's have a look at how this uh, looks like. Um, so here we have the wiki data entry about the concept persistent identifier. This concept, like any other concept in Wikidata, has a persistent identifier, like this Q420330. That's the persistent identifier for the concept uh, of persistent identifier in Wikidata. And uh, this can also be uh, turned into a globally unique uh, identifier um, by, by way of making use of the prefix. And then this data is available in multiple formats. I'll not go into this. Uh, the important thing right now is uh, I'm browsing this information in English. Uh, much of that is available in other languages as well. And uh, then uh, we have here structured data. So in the sem semantic web um, parlance, you have basically triples of subject, predicate, and object. So here uh, we would say persistent identifier is a subclass of an identifier. And the, uh, so the persistent identifier would be the subject. Uh, the subclass of would be the predicate. And this identifier would be the object. And then there uh, are several things we can say about the persistent identifier. So it, for instance, has the quality of persistence. Uh, it's the opposite of a non-persistent identifier. And it has identifiers in a number of other databases as well. Plus, there are Wikipedia pages uh, about this concept. OK, and uh, these subject predicate object things in Wikidata, the subject uh, can be a, um, a concept like this or a so-called property like subclass. We can also say things about the subclass. Uh, the predicate is always a, a so-called property. And the object can be anything. It can be another entry in the database, so another item. It can be essentially a string. It can be a numeric value. It can be a geo shape. Uh, it can be a URL, a file, or a number of other things. OK, so that's basically the setup of Wikidata. Um, so the main difference to the um, Wikipedia setup, which also has one page per concept, is that in Wikipedia, that page would present you with pros. And in Wikidata, you're being presented um, with more or less structured data, especially this, uh, this part here is structured and is fair. Also, Wikipedia has multiple websites to cover, uh, to cater to multiple languages, whereas in Wikidata, I can just easily switch. So let's just take one here, Espanol, for instance. And uh, now the, the same page is being reloaded, and it's rendered to me in Spanish. Um, I still see the information for the other languages here, but now the, the language names are all in Spanish. And then uh, all the structured data is also in Spanish. And all of this is editable, editable so I can go in and uh, yeah, basically add a value or fi fix any of those um, values. I'll go back for the rest of the presentation. I'll go back to English. Okay. Um, 
So yeah, that's the basics of Wikidata. Now, uh, since you have, you can have um, one item being linked to another item, being linked to yet another item, and so on. There's, this is the nature of linked open data. You can then pull these individual facts or bits of information together from multiple items and combine them. So here, for instance, we have the entry for the Fittipalooza 2018 event, and that gives us uh, some information about the people who attended, or some people who attended, and who they are, what the roles were that they had in this event, and some example publications, which may or may not be related to the event directly. Then, uh, on that basis, we can construct a graph of uh, people who have interacted by way of uh, co-authoring publications and attending the event. Um, and then there, yeah, there's a timeline. Also, we can get an idea of what the topic of that particular event was. So. Uh, this is extracting the information from topic tags on the publications that the people have published who attended the event. So a, a chain of links here. Um, but apparently uh, people who attended that event um, have published quite a bit about ontologies, persistent identifiers, data sharing, citation analysis, and so on. Um, we can then also look at uh, related uh, works or, or the list of most recent publications by people who attended that event um, and of note this actually goes this goes into uh, the present um, and so it continues after the event has finished uh, if there were a volume of proceedings this could be indexed here this wasn't the case uh, for related events we can also analyze that information and then uh, basically look at the time and location of events and then find similar events here uh, or we can look at uh, people who have attended certain events and then uh, find similar events that way and go to those profiles. Okay, so uh, we now have a rough understanding of how Wikidata works. We can see that we can use the linked open data nature of it to profile certain things. And now I wanted to um, demo a few other things that are closer to languages. So first, we will take a, a sample text here. Um, this is a recently published scholarly article about uh, basically the uh, biggest problem humanity changes, that we ignore uh, the challenges posed by climate change and the effects that that has on biodiversity specifically and, and related issues. Okay, so I'll just take the title here. I'll throw that into this tool, which will then um, tell us what language this might be. So it will look for those words here uh, no, in lowercase, um, and um, then it will check which languages know any of those words. Um, so I'm apparently underestimating challenges, avoiding ghastly future. Um, that's Oh, that's interesting. Now let's lower, lowercase all of that. Oh yeah, so if I lowercase this, then uh, English has eight of those words, all of them basically, whereas Latin has just two and uh, some other languages have uh, just one, the A. Um, and so our first guess would be, if we wouldn't know, that, uh, then probably English is the language of this particular article. Okay. Um, then, um, now let's, let's take the entire page here and throw that into another tool, uh, which will then help us, and here, yes, this says copyright, but it's a uh, Creative Commons open attribution license, CC by 4.0, so we are allowed to do this. I'll, uh, now I, that I know that this is actually English, um, I'll still lowercase everything to keep things simple. And then uh, basically the tool will check which of the words that I've pasted in are known to Wikidata as words. And here uh, we're at, at the word level. So A, well, we initially saw this as just one word, but now Wikidata knows this in English in, what is this, three, six, eight different ways. So 
uh, as a preposition, as an article, and as a letter. And for the preposition, it, ha it knows of three senses. Uh, for the article, it knows of three senses. And for the letter, it knows of three senses. Uh, I haven't actually looked at those uh, things, but the important thing is each of these um, has uh, an identifier. So the, and also, yeah, the form here, A, if you look at, oh, well, maybe I should just show that. So, um, yeah, so this is, again, uh, a tool that visualizes the information uh, and combines what's stated in different places, but then we can go directly to what Wikidata says about this. So A is a preposition and uh, is being used in several senses th that are explained here. Um, maybe we could use something more interesting. The absence, yes. Let's go to absence, let's see what that is. Yeah, so that, that's an interesting one. So here we have two. Um, first we learn this is a noun in English. It has this identifier, L9460. And then uh, L9460 S1 is the first sense, S2 is the second sense. Uh, this one is the non-existence of something, and it links to the item, that is the concept for this, uh, for this sense of the English word. And then there's the, uh, also a legal term, absence, uh, which has another entry in the concept space, uh, each of which has their own identifier. And then associated to those identifiers are then Wikipedia articles and wiki quotes, things, uh, and so on. Um, and yeah, also the properties here, again, they, they have persistent identifiers. Okay, um, the blue ones, uh, yeah, so for, for the, these were the, the things that were already in there. Uh, I can also go on things that don't have a form entry here. Uh, da -da -da -dee. Old metric, <laughs> okay, annihilate. Arbitrariness. That's a good, good word. Okay, so this already exists in the database. It's a noun. So let's see what what happens. Okay. We can edit this. Oh yeah. So it doesn't know of the plural yet, and I'm actually not sure about the what whether it would be appropriate to talk of arbitrarinesses or something like this. So I'll keep it that way. Um, then, what else can we do here? Zero backward. Export. Most of these are the names. That's the problem if you just copy paste an entire page. Lots of those things uh, already are, are just names of people. Congruent conservativeness, okay. Counteraction. Counteraction is a good word that's relatively straightforward to annotate, so I'll go again. Uh, so it already exists. Uh, we know it's a noun, so let's see what happens. Again, for this one, um, the plural is missing. So let's just annotate that. And now uh, we know that uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So uh, b by this mechanism, we uh, can actually add different forms. So th the plural was missing. So this F two here uh, was what I just added. Okay. Um, and for words that are entirely non not existing here, like disbelief. Let's see whether disbelief or uh, dissipation. This belief already exists. Dissipation also exists. Where they, so they're probably also missing the plural or, or something like that. Um, ecocide. Let's see whether that exists. Oh, this doesn't exist at all yet. So we can now start this. And yes, that unfortunately does have a plural. So um, now we are creating the new lexeme with this identifier. Um, 
eco side, and then we can go on and annotate that. Uh, yeah, we, we could uh, do that now. Uh, in, the, in a previous dry run, I used a, where is it here, Lexeme. This was by a capacity um, that I just created, and uh, I created in the same way. Let me just annotate this here. Yeah, and what I also did here is something I uh, want. Uh, I did demonstrate in previous dry run, but then uh, the audio recording during the screen recording kind of. Um, Caused the screen recording to fail. So the audio recording was uploaded. I did record all of that, but it didn't, uh, it wasn't saved. Anyway, so now that we have those identifiers for the um, words, we can annotate them, and that's that's the point. The, the tool that I use, uh, or that you uh, also can use for um, recording things, is called Lingua Libre. So you have to log in with your Wikimedia account, um, and then yeah, you do a test run. You're doing a test. Yes, this is a test. Did we hear anything? Okay, yes. And then uh, what could we use as a? I think we're going for. a word from some sort of a persistent identifier kind of thing. Yeah, Zugriff's Adresse, for instance, that's a nice word. So here's some metadata about me that will be associated with the recording. Now I have to pick the language I'm recording in. And then it wants me to just say this word and we'll record it. Zugriff's Adresse. I didn't like that very much, so I'll try it again. Zugriff's Adresse. Okay. Now that's fair enough. Now I'm uploading this. That's where the previous recording crashed. And now I can check my upload on Wikimedia Commons. I'll stop the recording here. Yes. And so I, I could now go in and uh, see whether two groups address exists and annotate that uh, and so on. Um, yeah, so these were the tools. Uh, if you want to play around with uh, Wikidata, there's also a number of test boxes, sandboxes. So these are uh, basically entries in the database that are known uh, to be used for testing purposes. And so you can ascribe essentially anything to them. Like you can give, you can give them uh, a date of birth or even two dates of birth, 2056. And then uh, this is, <laughs> or whatever you can even mistype, and then you can check actually what the um, quality control system is. So value date of birth should be in the past, but not before uh, this, and so on. So there is a flag here. Someone will probably go and fix this. But since this is just a sandbox item, that's completely fine. And you're invited to just play with that sandbox item as well. And uh, uh, periodically, uh, all the things that are in here, they will just be deleted. Okay, so that was the recording. That was the rough uh, overview of what I wanted to do in the session. And I hope you enjoyed and find mechanisms to engage.